Hello everybody, let's have a look at NBC suits or CBRN suits because a lot of people keep asking me for that and it's one of those things I keep saying, yeah I'll get a video done on it and I always forget to do videos on them. So, one of the reasons I don't do videos on NBC suits as often as um, gas masks and things is because obviously they're a lot bulkier, they're a lot more awkward to put on and things like that. So, what I'm going to look at in this video is the British Mark IV NBC suit which as far as I'm aware is still the one that's in British Army service. And I've also got an old East German rubberized NBC suit in this video as well. I'm not going to open this one, but I've got one open somewhere as well. Uh, this is a British Mark III NBC suit at the moment. This one expired um, in 1983, or was made in 1983. Um, so, the interesting thing to note with British suits is that, or at least the charcoal impregnated ones, is that they kind of have an expiry date, whereas the rubberized suits last much longer. Because the difference is... The old type of NBC suits and the heavy duty ones were rubberized fabric. You got a type of fabric, you coated it in a thick layer of rubber. When you do it up it's totally waterproof because you're essentially wearing a rubber suit. If you know how fishing waders work it's the exact same logic. That's why I've done my homemade NBC suits using fishing waders because they're great for it. But so the rubberized suits don't expire as such. But I suppose if they're left in direct sunlight for too long maybe the rubber will crack and things like that. But they're great in terms of offering high levels of protection, but they're very bulky and heavy. And, you know, so they're not good for storing because they don't fold up small. Um, as I said, they weigh quite a lot because they're rubber. Then you have the kind of NATO charcoal impregnated suits, which are much lighter. Um, and the logic behind these is you have a kind of felt material on the inside that's then impregnated with activated charcoal. So... The idea is that you can breathe slightly through the suit, or your skin can breathe through the suit, and the activated charcoal stops anything poisonous actually getting to your skin. The advantage of this, obviously, is it's very light. It's much easier to print camo-type patterns on it. But the other issue, of course, is that because there's activated carbon inside the suit itself, these expire. This is the reason I would not recommend buying one of these for survival reasons. Now, they are actually quite good to buy if you just want something that will keep you fairly warm in the winter for whatever reason, and that is fairly waterproof. These are one of those weird materials where it's not quite waterproof, but it's very water resistant. In a minute I'll show you what happens if you run a tap over these and you'll be able to see the water normally hits the suit and rolls straight off, kind of like, you know, duck feathers, things like that. So, anyway, what I'm going to do is show you both types of suit and put them on. Um, I'm not going to film me putting the entire suit on on video because that's a bit slow and awkward and very boring, but the problem with NBC suits, as I said before, is that they're clumsy. Even these sort of suits are clumsy. Um, it's not easy to get them on fast. And this is why I've said before, if you're a civilian, I don't think there's much point in owning them for the actual intention of using them to survive nerve gas or something like that. Because you need enough advance warning and have to get it on properly. But they are kind of useful in other ways, like respirators. Not as useful as a respirator, but... And as I've said before, you can make a homemade suit, which I think would be far more efficient and easy to put on and comfortable than using the old military surplus ones. Anyway, let's look at the East German rubberized suit first and put that on. And then we'll look at the British Army type one and put that on. I'm not going to bother doing it with a respirator today, but obviously you'd have the mask on as well. And then you'd fasten it around the mask so it doesn't come off and expose your skin. So here's a bulky rubberized East German suit. If I lift that whole thing up, you'll see just how big and bulky it is. This has got the boots built into the suit, which I like. This is also absolutely covered in talc because, you know, the Soviets and the rest of the Warsaw Pact love just throwing talc over absolutely everything to preserve it. So the inside is some sort of canvassy material, and as I said, rubber's coated on the outside. Some of these suits are thicker than others. The French used to use a really thick rubberized suit, and I think the West Germans did with a Zodiac suit. And they were, you know, like really thick rubber suits, so they'd be even more uncomfortable than these things. But you see that some of the rubber has discolored over time on these. Now, this is the Mark I East German suit, or the Generation 1 suit, which means that um, it's all one single unit. The legs are attached to the main suit. Uh, I've got a Mark II German suit as well, and that's exactly the same except for it's cut in two, like the Western suits. The legs um, have suspenders on, so you put the legs on first and you put the top on. There's not really an advantage or a disadvantage to each method, I don't think, unless you're using the weird American mop system where you wear parts of the NBC suit at different times and other times not. For the most part, I think, you know, having a single suit works just as well because they're not really any clumsier to get into, but once you've got the suit on, um, you know, it's all on. The problem is you need to know, obviously, with training-wise, that with 
most of the sort of charcoal impregnated suits you have to get the trousers on first because if you put the top on first you then can't you know do the trousers over the top especially because you have to take in mind of NBC suits that if you layer them in the wrong way chemical agents can drip down you and get into the suit so you always have to have the suit so everything is um you know like so if water runs off of one surface it then runs onto the next surface not that it can get into a gap so anyway I'm going to put this clumsy suit on and show it you then we'll go to the next suit Okay, this looks appropriately weird. How this suit works is you get all into it and then you need to start buttoning it up on the front. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I have to tuck all this bit of rubber in and then I should be able to find the buttons which are about here. So let's button these up. Now the difficulty of these suits as well is working out which button goes where, but that's going to be this one. Now NBC suits are fairly claustrophobic if you, you know, have claustrophobia. I don't have claustrophobia, but when I wear a regular, you know, respirator that doesn't bother me at all, but NBC suits can feel a bit entrapping, especially when you've got the mask on as well. Your senses are really cut down, and because some of these suits are designed to be really robust, you know, and not going to expose you to agents, um, the issue is once you've got them all buttoned up, they're not fast to take off, and if a, you know, little popper or something gets stuck, and you have some sort of claustrophobia issue, uh, you're not going to be very happy. So anyway, that's the buttons done up. Now obviously I've got the hood, so normally I'd be wearing my respirator there. Then what I'd do is I'd have this thing that ties up around the neck, which again isn't easy to do, like most things of NBC suits, it's fairly complicated. But what you'd do is this would tie around your neck, and it would tie around so that button is exposed on that side. And then you'd stretch this enough that you can get the button across to put in the popper. And again, like I said, the issue is with NBC suits that they are really clumsy to put on, and that's one of the things that has improved them. You know, you've got zippers and things on the more modern suits, and the bits, you know, like a Velcro or a pull cord, rather than trying to stretch something around and then find where the peg is. Because obviously, if you're using or sorry, if you're in um, an NBC attack and it's something as deadly as VX nerve gas you've not got any time at all to put the suit on it's the reason as I've said a few times that in the Gulf War soldiers on the front lines had to wear the suits and masks at all times because you know everybody knew that they'd be dead if they didn't get the suits on fast enough so anyway this is how you do the hands on this one you then put gloves over the top of your hands with your thumbs on these bits that's just to keep the sleeve from rolling down then you've got a similar thing to the neck where you do up one of these straps around it to keep it tight um, and then obviously you'd have your gloves tucked into the sleeves you wouldn't tuck the sleeves into the gloves because you need it so if it runs down it runs down that way because you're going to keep keeping your hands like in the down position not like that all the time when you're wearing the suit these have a similar thing around the ankles to keep the boot section secure but for the most part that's all there is to this suit but obviously hopefully you can see this entire thing is a weird rubberized suit. Um, but yeah, if you wore this out in a sort of hurricane or a rainstorm, you'd be very, very dry with it on because the easiest way of, to think of the sort of chemical suits is think of these type like basically military grade, industrial grade um, waterproofs. That's the easiest way of thinking about it. The whole point is nothing gets through it. The only gap where air can come in is here, and that's where you wear your respirator, so everything coming through is filtered. But yeah, so this is your rubberized Jawa outfit, I guess. Um, these aren't too uncomfortable until you start moving around a lot, and then that's where the issue builds up, because obviously they're designed to be impermeable, nothing gets through, nothing gets out. Your sweat builds up on the inside, so if you wear um, an NBC suit for long enough, you'll have your sweat sloshing around inside it with you, because there's nowhere else it can go, which is a bit grim. But there you go, that's the uh, retro type of NBC suits, um, so this is an East German Mark I suit, or whatever it's called, but yeah, a lot of the Soviet type Warsaw Pact suits were like this. Right, let's have a look at my clown trousers, here we go. So, how these work is essentially, you put them on with the suspenders on at the back first, then you tie them somehow at the front, I'm not sure if this is the exact design you're meant to use or not. There's a little velcro belt as well to pull them tighter. So the idea is that obviously these go on first. Then what we're going to do is chuck the top on afterwards. And the reason for that is obviously it means that any fluids that run down you don't run into the trousers. If you put the top on first and did the trousers 
second you'd have that problem. So as I was saying, the British suits are good in the regards and other Western suits with the zippers and the Velcro, but they're much easier to put on. They're still not really fast to put on, but they're much easier just simply because, you know, of things like zippers and Velcro, not trying to tie bits of rubber together. So, what we're going to do now is just simply do the zipper up on the front. There's also Velcro on this to give you a better seal. You'll see lots of photos of soldiers who have duct taped these suits together as well, because um, duct tape or duct tape is very good for um, keeping bits sealed, especially around the gloves and things like that. So. What we do now is actually put the hood itself up. And the British soldiers always used to call these noddy suits because it's kind of got noddy as thing. Uh, but I suppose a lot of people won't know what noddy is, so <laughs> that's probably a bit pointless me telling you that. And the zipper's stuck. That's a real sign of quality, isn't it, on something that you need to save your life. The zipper doesn't quite work right. Okay, so obviously I'm going to look through like this. Now, what we've got here is obviously the Velcro at the top to pull this tight. This is elasticated itself with the hood, so you would... What you'd do um, with the real one is obviously... Let me just put that down a bit. What you do with the real one is have your respirator on. The elastic pulls tight against the ridges on the respirator if there is one. Like with the S10, that's why the ridge runs around the outside of the mask to catch the hood. So, that would keep the hood in place. You do the Velcro up. You do the Velcro up around your wrists, again, like I said, this makes it much easier than the East German suit because you simply do the Velcro up to make a tight seal. Uh, you put your glove on first, obviously Velcro over it like that. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, these suits are definitely superior in terms of ease of putting them on, but the protective ability of them is obviously less. As I was saying, it's just because the charcoal inside expires. So... It's not really a clear winner. In terms of ease of putting on and user friendliness, the Western suits easily win, or at least charcoal line suits, because I think everybody makes suits like this now. In terms of overall total protective ability, the rubberized suits win. Um, but as I've said before, if you fashion your own suit out of a big, decent, thick, sort of storm raincoat, waterproof trousers or waders are the best thing, uh, you can make your own one at home very effectively. Anyway, let me show you what happens when water hits the suit. Alright, what you can see there is a sink. I'm sure you all, I'm sure you all know what a sink is. But let's uh, show you what happens if the water touches the suit. Now, I don't know how obvious this is going to be on camera, but you should hopefully be able to see that the water just literally sprays off the suit. Hopefully that's visible on the camera, but the water just kind of sits there. It doesn't really do much. So, let me just turn the tap off. Now, hopefully you can see... Oh, it's going to be hard to get this in frame. Hopefully you can see that the water's just sitting there as droplets. It's not actually really doing anything. Now, as I said, these suits aren't totally waterproof. What will happen eventually is that the uh, water will eventually compromise the suit, as far as I'm aware, because of how these are made. So it's more like treating a fabric rather than actually making a waterproof fabric itself. However, they do work fairly well for what they are. So, um, yeah, as I said, the rubberized suits are better in the long run, but these things are, do offer a fairly decent level of protection even when expired, because as you can see, the water's not getting through easily. And, as I've said before, these are sometimes a bit more comfortable to wear, as weird as it sounds, than actual raincoats in certain scenarios, because at least you can breathe a bit through these. So these do have their uses, even if you're using it as a coverall when painting or something like that. And again, water droplets just kind of sit on it, shake my arm off. But my arm is totally dry underneath. So, there we go. That's my video on charcoal impregnated NBC suits versus the rubberized NBC suits. Um, obviously NBC, if you didn't know, is nuclear, biological, chemical. CBRN is chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear. I actually prefer the term NBC because surely a suit like this can't actually give you radiological protection if it's from stuff like gamma radiation. Um, but yeah, as I said, there's no clear winner with these because it depends what you want the suit for. And as I said, the rubber suits have the advantage of never really expiring unless you do something stupid with them. And these suits have the advantage of being lightweight, you know, when you first get them, they're that small for each part of the suit. So, you know, it's a really good system 
for these at least. Um, I think my favourite one is the West German NBC suit, so I'll get that all out for a video. I didn't go into chemical gloves and chemical overboots for this video, I'm not a massive fan of chemical overboots, that's why I prefer the waders, I like having the actual kind of Wellington boot fused to the trousers, because I think that just gives you a better level of protection personally. But, there we go, that is an NBC suit, what I'll just do now is this arm that's still wet, hopefully you might be able to see on the camera, um, hopefully you'll see that my arm is bone dry underneath because this has worked absolutely fine. It feels a bit cold because you can feel the like chill of the water through the suit, but it's at least not wet. So if this was nerve agent droplets on my arm, I'd be absolutely fine. I guess the problem is when you come to take the suit off, you don't accidentally touch it and die. But there you go. Uh, there's actually loads of water on the floor now. Uh, if I just scroll onto that, hopefully you can see that the suit has dripped water everywhere, but that water hasn't at least gone onto me. So. There you go, that's NBC CBRN suits, hopefully you maybe learnt something from this, I don't really know what I'm trying to talk about in this, but that's your different types of NBC suits. I think as well there are kind of modern, very cheap, you can buy them, I can't remember the name of them, but they're basically like rubberized, a bit like these gym one, but they're kind of just like elasticated material that's rubberized, and they're designed to kind of be disposable, but maybe I'll buy one at some point, because I think you can get the both bits for about £10. They don't offer the same level of protection, but they're kind of interesting. It's just like, you know, like those asbestos remover suits. I'm trying to think of the names of them, but they're just kind of like the elasticated suits you wear when you're doing something and don't want to get like infectious substances on you or dangerous substances. It's like one of those. They're just, but that, but rubberized. They're meant to be thrown away after you use them, but if you're just using it for home use, there's not really much that can go wrong with it. There you go. There you go. This is my rambling video on NBC and CBRN protection.